Fighter 6. Boom, boom. So when I was playing Street Fighter 6, I was in World 4 mode, and something that surprised me was how fun and engaging these minigames were. And they're not just fluff either, they're, they're a fun and interesting way to just kind of teach mechanics to players. My absolute favorite minigame has to be Hado Pizza. It's very simple. I like the way that they show you the motion. So you see here, a quarter circle forward, a quarter circle back. And especially for the DP motion, it does this nice kind of swoosh. So if I slow this down, here are the inputs as they are raw. It comes in swoosh. And I think even though it's not exactly what you would usually see in your standard notation, I think that explains really well to new players what they're expected to do, as opposed to just seeing forward down, down forward. And I think if your goal is to make a game more accessible to newer players, this is exactly the kind of stuff that you need. You hide it in plain sight. All of these mini games, in some way, are secretly teaching you mechanics to make you a better player in versus modes. I used this analogy in another video of mine, but it's like when Mr. Miyagi is teaching Daniel-san, you know, wax on, wax off. And he's like, this sucks. I don't like this. But I'm supposed to be learning karate from you and you're just showing me wax on, wax off. And he's like, throws a punch at him and he goes, Daniel, do wax on. And, he's like, oh. and it's that moment where it's like, oh, damn, I'm actually able to do shinku hudoken or whatever by making a pepperoni pizza. It's, it's fantastic. I, I like it. I'm all about tricking a player into learning something. <laughs> And they're pretty fun as well. I mean, Scrap Heap is all right. It harkens back to, you know, beating up a car in Street Fighter 2. This time it's a truck and it's in Abigail's yard. You'll see the sign that says it's Abigail's. This is pretty straightforward. I didn't have time to unlock the harder difficulties of this, so I don't know how it evolves over time. Whether it's a different kind of vehicle that you beat up or if it just becomes more difficult. And something to remember about this mode especially is that daytime and nighttime have different sets of mini games available. So if I swap to nighttime, very quickly, by the way, you can do this at any point. You go back to your apartment and swap. Luke is gonna text me. He's gonna be, hey, what's up? Cool. Go away. I'm trying to teach him about mini games. Food for thought. Excellent. So it's nighttime. Check my phone, check my map. There is only one mini game available. This little orange bronze symbol. So if I go back to Abigail's scrap metal yard, the guy is no longer there, so you can't do the mini game at night. At least not at the point in the story that I got to. But I'm wondering if nighttime activities show up later in these areas or not. So let's swap back to daytime. I'm gonna hang out over near Chun Li, and I'll just bring up the map again to show you look how many minigames there are. And just a comparison immediately, that's the nighttime version. You can pause this if you want to analyze. So we'll head over to chun -Li's area. I'm gonna get smacked in the back. I have to beat up this person very quickly. Once we get over to chun -Li, though, this is the first minigame you'll probably see. Breaking boards. And this seemed really simple at the beginning. <laughs> However, Kung Fu. something I didn't quite know how to trigger was getting your character to turn around. So there's points here where you see I'm jumping towards someone on the right or the left, and my character is still facing the opposite direction. I throw a punch or a kick out, and it doesn't hit the boards. You just have to get like a little bit closer in order to actually get them. The other thing is, I'm playing here on the normal difficulty. This doesn't occur on the easy difficulty, but if you miss or you hit one of these people holding the boards, 
I'll throw it at you. Which is pretty good in a sense because you have to think about what moves you're using that have multi-hits. For example, I'm going to jump in the air. I'll do a heavy punch. I'm going to hit the board on the way down. But because it's two hits, I end up hitting the guy holding the board as well. Which he doesn't like. Suddenly he throws the board at me. Something you can do here as well is, depending on what stance you're using, I'm using Chun stance for all of these. If you're Luke's pupil, you can use his specials. I feel like they would be very helpful when you have those guys standing on the top. And my favorite thing to do immediately is challenge the person who just gave me the quest to a fight. God, I really did make a wild looking character. Well, that was my view on the mini games. I'm going to be creating a world tour video where I look more closely at world tour in general. Definitely recommend checking out Hado Pizza when you guys get the game. I've been making a bunch of other Street Fighter 6 content, so if you like what you saw from this one and you like more, I made a 20 minute travel log slash first impressions of Street Fighter 6. You can probably click the screen right now or check the comments and I'll link it. And make sure you subscribe and you comment and like and hit the bell and share this because there's going to be a lot more Street Fighter 6 content coming out of me.